So review for good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning. What else do you? Amen. So easy. Amen. So be it. Um, what was the other one? Oh. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then the last one last week was thanks be to God. So it's thanks. This, your hand is like this, but it goes this way. Be to God. Keep your hand in the same position, but you're just going up. You're showing reverence to God. So thanks be to God. Okay? Thank you, Jody. Um, this week, Pastor Allen is on vacation, and we wish him safe journeys to a family reunion in California. And we are grateful that Pastor Virginia Bynick is here with us, leading us in the Eucharist. Pastor Jenny, thank you for being with us. And also, um, we welcome our musicians today, Josh and Kathy Crucy. Thank you for sharing your gifts in worship today. So I invite you to take a deep breath and prepare for worship as we listen to the prelude.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and that you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unseeking anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs. And from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. According to St. Matthew. Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Blessed are you, Lord. 
like to invite the children forward. Because today we're going on a picnic. So I need your help thinking this through. Shall we put the picnic blanket out, Jacinda? Here we go. And we're all going to sit around our picnic blanket. Let's put it right here in the middle. So come sit around the blanket with me. And let's think. If you were going on a picnic and we had food here in our basket, what would you have in the picnic basket? Fruit. OK, here, let's have some fruit. I'll give you each a piece of fruit. Come on forward, Jane. We're passing out some fruit. Here you go. Here you go. All right, everybody take a bite of your fruit. Mmm, delicious. What else would we have in our picnic basket? You don't know. We can use our imaginations. Anything? What would you like, Jacinda? Um, cheese, sandwich. cheese sandwiches. Excellent. Here you go. Here's a cheese sandwich. Each one of us, I'm passing it on. Come on forward. We're having a cheese sandwich. Would you like to try one? Here, I'll give it to your mom, and she can share with you, OK? Mmm, delicious. Let's think. One more thing. What else? What would we have in our picnic basket? Pineapples. Pineapples? OK. They're already cut up. Your mom cut them up for us. So here you go. Here's a bowl of pineapple pieces for you. Everybody take a piece. Mmm, delicious. OK. So we just had a great picnic. Now imagine we come together for our picnic, and everybody out there wants to join in our picnic. Do you think this basket would have enough food for everybody? You think so? All that, all in this little basket for everybody out there? What makes you think that? All right, if you cut it up into tiny pieces, then we all share. You are absolutely right, Jacinda. Would we be full after we ate it? No, maybe not. Now imagine that there are thousands of people that come and we have to feed them from this one picnic basket. Tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. Yeah, everybody might get a speck. And then would we be full after that tiny piece? No, probably not. Today in the gospel, we hear a miracle that Jesus did, that there was a picnic basket with five loaves and two fish, and all the people, thousands and thousands, somehow ate and not only did they eat, they were satisfied. Could you put your hand on your stomach and imagine it really full? And guess what? After they ate, not only were they full, there were leftovers. So everybody got to take leftovers. There were 12 baskets full of leftovers. I don't know how Jesus did it, but somehow Jesus took what little they had and made it enough for everyone, which is pretty awesome. So maybe we can think about how we can share what we have and what Jesus might do with that. So can everybody stand up with me? And we're going to join hands and say a prayer together. Okay, oops, there's a couple more friends in the circle. Okay, let us pray. Dear Jesus, help us to remember that whenever we share, it is enough, and you make it enough. Give us generous hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you for your help. You can go back to your seats. And there's some snacks after church, so make sure you go downstairs. There's lots down there. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes when I read the Bible, I feel really sorry for Jesus. Today is one of those days. Jesus has been working his tail off. Healing people, teaching, truth teaching through parables, constantly on the go, go, go. Jesus needs some Sabbath time. He needs a summer vacation. And today, Jesus' heart is especially heavy because he just heard that his cousin, John the Baptist, on Herod's command, had his head handed over on a platter. So on top of the work stress, Jesus is full of grief and sorrow. His burdens are heavy, 
and perhaps even experiencing anger and fear, knowing that the one who had baptized him, the one who was preparing the way for him, had been murdered in prison, and who might come for him next? <laughs> no wonder he needed some time alone. So he tries to get away. He's looking for a little bit of summertime, easy living, some peace on the lake, away from crowds and noise and work. Perhaps you can relate to that desire. But when he gets to the shore, the people had followed him. They had seen what he can do, and they wanted more, more lessons, more healing. And this wasn't some small gathering of a few hundred in a congregation. There were thousands of people. And instead of telling them to go away, wait until he was ready, Jesus had compassion on them. Compassion. And he continued his work of gracious healing. Now we can only imagine the disciples' reaction at the end of that day, because I'm pretty sure they were exhausted too. They were in the middle of the action with Jesus. Their job was crowd control, logistics, and they were probably looking forward to a little bit of R&R &R themselves. So when it got close to supper time that evening, they saw an opportunity. Jesus, the people have to eat, so let's just stop now, send them away, and we can pick up where we left off tomorrow. Nope. Jesus' response to them was pretty simple. They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. Now, if you're a type A personality, this command would have you running the other way. We didn't plan for this. We haven't prepared adequately. We only have five loaves and two fish, Jesus, barely enough for ourselves. We just don't have enough. We just don't have enough. Did you know that this gospel story is so important that all four gospels included it? There is a profound truth in what Jesus did that day on that lake shore and a profound command for all who follow Jesus. He says, you feed them. Show me what you've got. Jesus takes what they have. He gives thanks. He blesses it. He breaks it. And he gives it again until all are fed and satisfied. What they thought was just a little bit was enough. It was more than enough. Now, we could hypothesize about what happened that day. You know, did people have food stashed away and so they shared it around? Or did Jesus somehow miraculously create more food, which he could do? Rather than giving in to these rational questions, Pastor Tim Brown challenges us. He writes, the key questions to be asking about such miracles are, what do they tell us about the relationship between God and humankind? What do they reveal about who Christ calls us to be in the world? And to what larger truths do these signs point? So number one, seeing the crowds, Jesus had compassion on them. It's important to note that his compassion did not end with sympathetic feelings but moves to the alleviation of the condition that elicited that compassion. Number two, Jesus makes the disciples the purveyors, the spreaders of kingdom compassion. When they detect the need of the gathered people and seek to distance themselves and Jesus from that need, Jesus disallows it. He commands them instead to respond to the need. You feed them. And three, 
He commands them in spite of the fact that they have absolutely no idea how they can accomplish that which Jesus has called them to do. Hmm. Brown continues, of course, we do not have 5,000 hungry men, plus women and children, staring us in the face. We have a whole planet full. The digital age has brought us face to face with nearly 800 million people worldwide who are food insecure and who very literally need to be fed. We are face to face with those who hunger for justice, like the millions displaced from their homes by warfare, unrest, and famine, who are starving for security and home. We are face to face with thousands of unaccompanied minors here, now among us, who hunger for stability, safety, and love. In these cases and so many more, can we hear the Savior's voice? You feed them. Do we know how we'll do it? Likely not. But then again, Jesus did not seem to consider logistical uncertainty or technical infeasibility to be insurmountable impediments to pursuit of the kingdom. Jesus simply sent his disciples to work as agents of grace distribution. He still does. I must be honest, there are times when I am tired, when I look at the needs in our city and our country and our world, and it's overwhelming. I feel like I can't make a bit of difference and I want to act like they're disciples. As a congregation, we, we might worry about our finances, worrying that we really don't have enough to share and make a difference. Jesus bears those burdens. The one who gave everything, who poured out his life on a cross that we might have life, continues to pour that grace on us each day. Sometimes we need to be fed too, and then we are strengthened to feed again. <laughs> David Lose reminds us that God promises to take whatever we offer, what little bit we think we have, we offer it, and with thanksgiving, God can use it, stretch it, even multiply it to make sure it is enough. Enough not only for us, but for those around us. What will that look like? Who knows where God is leading us as a congregation, but it's exciting to know God is with us every step of the way. God is still at work in and through us, and whenever we don't feel it, be assured, we are enough. You are enough as a child of God. And God is not done doing good to us and for us and through us. It's my prayer that we will continue to give, trusting that there will be leftovers. And may we have the courage and grace to a trust to trust that eternal promise in Jesus our Lord. Amen.
join together in confessing our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of the covenant, call your church on earth to worship together to glorify your name in every language, language and in every land. We pray for Common Ground Ministry and Pastor Tom, for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal, and Father John for Trinity Deaf and their leaders, Pastor Rick and Dee, and for St. Mark's Lutheran and their lay minister, Doug. Lord, in your mercy. God of abundance, who provides fields of wheat and vineyards of grapes, bless farmers and growers who furnish bread and wine for tables of abundance. Lord, in your mercy. God of all compassion, Raise up just leaders who care for the poor and hungry. Let nations share your bounty across the world and assure that no one goes without food. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, fill those who are starving, whether they long for food or companionship. Comfort the lonely and grieving. Heal those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. We especially pray for Rick, Elton, Ina, Mark, Walter, Carl, Brian, Kathy, Daryl, Tom, and those we name before you now, out loud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, God who satisfies, bless, and strengthen the feeding programs of this congregation and community. Be with hamburger grillers and salad servers, with those who stock pantry shelves, and those who point out need, whether in our neighborhood or half a world away. And bless our neighbors whom we remember in prayer this week, Allison, Jason, Marley and Julia, David, Joe, Lisa, Joey, Robbie and Katie, Douglas and Allison. Lord, in your mercy. Bless us as we remember the saints at your everlasting feast until we join them at your bountiful table. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we place all our prayers, spoken and unspoken trusting in the mercy of Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We, bless you, Lord. we give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit, for our gathering within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. Our Lord's body, let us take together.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace. For you are Lord forevermore. Amen. May God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Announcements, announcements, announcements. No. <laughs> I'm in camp mode. No, I won't do that. Good morning. Just a quick few announcements for the good of the community. Um, this week, there will be Bible break. So Bible break is not canceled. For those of you who join us, we are going to have it. So 10 o'clock, we have coffee and often treats. Please join us, anybody who likes to look at the text for the next week. It prepares you for worship. It's a fun time. Number two, we are in the midst of feeding our neighborhood with Courtyard Cafe. Marion Jameson over there has a clipboard and an opportunity for you to be able to share in whatever way you can, whether being present or offering food or monetary donations. It all helps us as we do that feeding ministry of body and spirit. Also, in three weeks, we are, oops, here's my visual, having a church picnic. And it will be on the 27th, the last Sunday of the month. We will also be having back backpack blessing that day. But for those who choose not to worship in the park at 11, there will be a 9.30 service here as well. So you can come to one or both or come for lunch after worshiping here. And also I have an announcement about our beautiful altar flowers. We have four dates open this year. Maybe these dates speak to you. August 13th, September 17th, October 15th, or December 10th. If um, you'd like to help support that, there is a sign up in the uh, narthex over to the side, or you can speak to Ann Harnish, who is our flower coordinator. Thank you, Ann. Any other announcements that I may have missed? Well, let us go on our way rejoicing as we sing the final hymn together.
ways. Go in peace. The Spirit sent us forth to serve.